kind of trouble am I going to get into today? Let's see. Good morning, everyone, and welcome back. So in my sand battery videos, there were hundreds and hundreds of comments about using water instead of sand. Uh, there was lots of math involved and people uh, kept commenting that water has a higher specific heat than sand does and a better water capacity or a better heat capacity than sand does and how water works so much better than sand. I understand sort of the chemistry that they were referring to. So let's, you know, give this a shot. So after a couple of false starts, um, I have some data and let me walk you through my experimental setup here. Hey, if you like this content, uh, make sure you hit a thumbs up, a like, and a subscribe, and hit the notification. Let's get building. So I got two metal uh, paint buckets from Home Depot and painted them both black and filled one with sand and one with water. And then I took my data logger and uh, put the probe down towards the bottom of both and put them out on matching tables in the backyard uh, of my place here in Central Texas. And I let them bake for a day and a half. So we've got an apples to apples comparison. The sun hits them at about 7, 7.30 in the morning and it crests over the house about six o'clock. So these things get about 11 hours of sun approximately. Uh, so I've got a graph that shows the heat climbing on both of them, peaking, and then cresting back down. Now there were two different numbers that we were expecting, or two different pieces of data that we're expecting. The highest temperature recorded and how long that heat was retained once the sun had gone down. So here are some quick fun numbers. The maximum temperature achieved in the sand was 102.5 Fahrenheit. The maximum temperature achieved by the water was 96.8. So all things being exactly perfectly equal, the sand got hotter. Now the average temperature for sand was 68.7 and for water was 67.5. So the sand held at that temperature an average data set of a longer period of time. And just for reference, um, you can program those data, longer, data loggers for how frequently, they, how frequently they take temperatures. And I had mine set to two minutes. So every two minutes, it's recording the temperature. So I can see a really good swing down in the middle of the night and then up in the middle of the afternoon, and then the rest of the afternoon once the sun goes down and crest. So I'll put the data up, uh, a graph here on the screen, and let you take a look at it. Uh, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, 7 p.m. So this starts at 7 p.m. It heat hits its peak coldness around 3, and then sun comes up and it starts to climb. The blue line is sand. Climbing, 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 climbing. Hits its peak at about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And then starts to drop again. Now, if you notice, its peak, so th th this is day one, and then this is day two over here. This is about noon on Monday. So what's interesting is if you look at the equivalent time between a 24-hour period, both of them are, both of the, of the jugs are warmer than they were the day before. So they really are, they are retaining heat as opposed to 24 hours before that. So here's day one and here's day two. But not really markedly any better than each other. So they kind of crisscross back and forth between sand and water and then this is day two uh, here about noon on Sunday so this is what the data logger information looks like uh, out of this really neat little logger that I bought off of Amazon so we've got maximum temperature minimum temperature and then these are the individual logs every two minutes And so I get to have a true apples-to-apples -apples comparison. 